All right, welcome to Basketball Street Beat, episode something. <laughs> I lost count. Uh, just know <clears throat> that this is the final episode. Series final. Well, season final. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Raptors bring Canada their first ever uh, basketball championship. Magical season by the Raptors. Uh it, it was so monumental for the Raptors. Drake came out with two new tricks uh, to celebrate the Raptors' victory, and they're actually pretty good. But uh, a, a great season by the Raptors. I really do feel like the Raptors did ex- exceed expectations uh, as far as winning the title. I mean, honestly, I mean, in the beginning of the season, if you would have asked me <coughs> would the Raptors beat the Warriors in the finals, uh, my answer would probably be no, considering the acquisitions that the Warriors had gotten on their team, like DeMarcus Boogie Cousins. Uh, but after seeing how the Raptors played this season and how they played together as a team and how the whole country of Canada, you know, stuck behind these guys. <clears throat> and Kawhi Leonard, I mean, he came into the season with something to prove. I mean, he had been battling injuries the past couple of seasons in San Antonio. And a lot of people were asking, does Kawhi still have it? Does he still got it? And Kawhi proved that he is still one of the one of basketball's elites. He led Toronto in scoring. And he pretty much led the charge as far as winning the NBA championship. Uh, the question is, will Kawhi be staying in Toronto after this season? And it's one of those situations that can go either way. I mean, Toronto is willing to give him a fat deal. Toronto is willing to give him pretty much the whole country of Canada to make him stay. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, when Kawhi did leave San Antonio at first, he did say he wanted to go to L.A. And L.A. does have their radar on him. Uh, and Kawhi, he's already done what he set out to do in Toronto, and that's bringing, you know, a title. So, I mean, I feel like if he wants to move on from Toronto, he can move on from Toronto in peace because he brought him a title. Uh, I just think if he goes to L.A., I think a tandem of him, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis would just be downright nasty, downright deadly. I mean, mm-hmm. after the Lakers got Anthony Davis, I mean – the odds on in Vegas, I think Caesar Sportsbooks, I believe, uh, they mm. give the Lakers the best chance to win the NBA title. Before Anthony Davis, they were given the tenth best chance. Now they have the best chance of winning the title next season. Oh, well, you know, Kawhi's been kind of mum on 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 his future plans. Uh, he's already said it. he's trying to have as much fun before the next season starts that he can in celebrating this title. Which, uh, if my memory serves me correct, is correct. Um, is the last big championship hurdle for Canada. Uh, it is. It is. <clears throat> I know uh, the Blue Jays have won two World Series. Uh, of course, Canada has several hockey championships. Stan- Stanley Cups, and of course they have the Great Cup, but that's just a guaranteed title for Canada. I mean, come on now. Yeah, and now you have the NBA now, championship. Now they have an NBA championship because uh, Canada does not have a NFL team. Uh, it can happen someday if Drake puts his mind to it. <laughs> <laughs> and the closest thing they have is Buffalo. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. I mean Geogra- geographically, yes, geogra- but geographically, that's what I'm saying. But still, uh, but a big up to Toronto Can- to the Toronto Raptors. Also. Um, Also, I got to give a shout out to the Golden State Warriors. And for those who may not know, I despise the Golden State Warriors. But I have to give credit where credit is due. Golden State fought despite the injuries. I mean, KD battled injuries and also prayers up for Kevin Durant. I mean, he came back from a calf injury and he he ruptured his Achilles. And he's probably going to miss all of next season, possibly, most likely. Yeah. Uh, And also, I believe uh, Klay Thompson went down, I believe, with a, a torn ACL, I believe. Yeah, he's out with uh, he, a torn ACL. He, yeah, he went out, uh, I believe it was game five he had went out, and then uh, he came back and he got injured again. No, he was out for game three. Game three? Yeah, and he I, came I, back. I, I lost track. It was a wild series, but... Uh, but I, I I hate the people, uh, the opinions of the people out there who want to blame the Warriors' loss solely on injuries. I mean, no. I mean, you, no, all no. right. So, I mean, you look at it. The Warriors had already won a title before KD even got to Golden State. And, and that same squad won 73 games. Mm, <clears throat> pretty much. I mean, 
you look at a team that, you know, in the first season of the surge, they won a title. The next season, they went 73-9. and I mean, they lost to Cleveland in a seven-game series in the finals that year, but still, the Warriors have been a dominant team before Kevin Durant. I mean, they... You, you know, not just... I want to make this statement. You know, just think about it. Um, this is uh, the Warriors' last season in Oakland. They couldn't defend their home court once in the finals. And and that's just going to show how talented this Toronto Raptors team is, how, how much they are on the same page. Just, you know... How deadly, how lethal this Raptors team was. I and they, mean, they got blown out twice, including once at home. Inside the Oracle. I mean, in, in the playoffs, going up to this season, the Oracle has been the <laughs> hardest place to play in pretty much all of basketball. Yeah, Toronto at, was 3 0 in the Oracle. In the finals. Just let that sink in for a second. One of the most dominant teams in the playoffs, period. The Golden State Warriors couldn't win a single home game inside the Oracle against Toronto. I mean, what does that say about Toronto? You, you can't just say, oh, well, Golden State was lacking or, or this and that and a third. That's just going to show how good Toronto was this season. I mean, if you want to see how good Toronto was this season, forget the regular season. NBA Finals, where the, the, rap, where the Warriors have thrived the past few years, especially inside the Oracle, hardest place to play. And the Raptors took all games in the Oracle. Just let, just let that sink in for a second. I'll, I'll wait. You know, it's, um, I was just thinking because to me – Toronto, even in the games they lost, for the most part, dominated a series. I mean, they came back against the Warriors in Game 5. Or no, excuse me, it's Game 6. Had a lead, but ultimately lost it late. So the fact that they came back down from like 12 says a lot for their team. Uh, and then you sit there and say, okay, Warriors did not win a single home game, but... At least the Raptors won one in Toronto. They did. And the Warriors really only won one game in this series where they actually maintained control. I believe that was, I think, game two, I believe. That was game two. Wait, yeah, it was. Even even that was like a four-point win. So, Toronto was just... Masterful. Yeah, and they executed their, their game plans fantastically and just imagine what would happen if Kawhi stays we could be mm. looking at the bus on the east <clears throat> despite yeah you have Joel and B Jimmy Butler and Ben Simmons for Philadelphia yes you have Giannis in in Milwaukee yeah you have the Boston well I wouldn't say Boston because Boston's pretty much going to get dismantled by free agency uh, specifically with the Kyrie Irving situation I think Irving goes to Los Angeles uh, I believe if Irving goes to Los Angeles Kawhi will probably stay. Uh, and I feel that if Kawhi, I mean, whether Kawhi leaves or stays, Kyrie's leaving. So, because I also think maybe Brooklyn will probably be a good landing spot for Kyrie, maybe. Just in my opinion. Yeah, you, know, you look at the, at the uh, Leonard situation, and, I mean, you can see the pros and cons of both. Like, you know, it's like, and they're, and they're basically the same thing. Uh, you now know you have a championship squad in, in Toronto. And yeah. Toronto's going to do everything they can to keep it. I mean, you know, I'm pretty you know, sure th- there's a lot of cap space on that team. You're in a situation where you can compete every year, or most every year, for, at least for the time being. But the on the other hand, you just spent one season in Toronto and you won it all. What else can you do? <laughs> other than other than winning another one, I mean, you've already accomplished the pinnacle of a, w- winning a title in both conferences. Some LeBron James has not done. At least not yet. Hmm, not yet. You could probably do it next season, possibly. I, mean, I think if the r- the right players, I was listening to ESPN Radio, and they're talking about how uh, you, you need to get players. You know, rotational players and, and uh, support players and, and get a bench going. Because you're not going to be able to win with just LeBron, AD, and and, and uh, one other guy. It's just not going to happen. I mean, look at the Miami Heat back when LeBron James was there. I mean, yeah, you had LeBron, D-Wade, and Chris Bosh, but you also have to look at the supporting cast they had. They had Mario Chalmers. They had Ray Allen. They had Shane Battier. I mean, they had I mean, Mike Miller, who was uh, one hell of a rotational <clears throat> player for them. So they had the supporting cast in order to be able to win a title. 
Yeah, and they added Ray Allen later. And then you look at Golden State. Well, Golden State, they're they're Golden State. What else? What else there to say? Even though I don't like how people like, as far as coaching is concerned, they won't give all the credit to Steve Kerr. When really, that's Mark Jackson's team. Yes, I'm saying it. that is Mark Jackson's team. Mark Jackson was who started this Warrior Revolution. Because I mean, you look at Steph Curry, Draymond Green, <coughs> Clay Thompson. I mean, the the guys who have led the charge for the Warriors for so like, you know for so long. Those are Mark Jackson's players. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from Steve Kerr. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's a good coach. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is just me just being modest in my words. Even though Steve Kerr, he's pretty much just sitting there on, on the, you know, on the sideline, right? He's just sitting there and he's just watching his players play. He might say a few comments, and but mainly his players are the ones doing it. Just imagine, you know, how much more dangerous this Warriors team can be if they still had Mark Jackson. I feel that... The Warriors would probably be the most unbeatable team in the league, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I'm not a coach or a GM or anything. I'm just a, a simple little podcaster. Just, you know, looking to, I'm looking to take Stephen A's job or work with Stephen A, wherever he decides. But anyways. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Um, it should be an interesting offseason. Oh, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, it's already off to a banging start with uh, what happened with the Pelicans and the Lakers. I mean, you look at the Pelicans, they gave uh, Anthony Davis to the Lakers, and the Lakers give us Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and three first-round picks. And out of those three first-round picks, it includes this year's first-round pick, the number four overall pick. So the Pelicans got two of the first five picks of this year's NBA draft. Do you also add Lonzo Ball? I mean... And my thing about Lonzo Ball, I'm just going to kind of, you know, kind of ramp for a second as far as Lonzo Ball is concerned. <clears throat> and Lonzo Ball was one of the more highly touted rookies back in his draft class. I mean, LeVar Ball really hyped him up. And Lonzo Ball didn't really live up to the hype for the past couple of seasons. And I feel that going to the Pelicans and going to a much more experienced head coach like Alvin Gentry, I feel that Coach Gentry is going to unlock uh, more of uh, Lonzo's potential, and I feel that the the guys that's going to be around Lonzo are going to really help complement him, and I feel that Lonzo's going to really unlock parts of the of his game that people have been dying to see for the past two seasons, and so I feel that it was you know not too bad of a deal. Uh, Brandon Ingram, as far as his health is concerned, not sure if he's cleared. Uh, Josh Hart, from what I've been hearing, he's a he's you know a decent rotational player, and then we got three first round picks. So David Griffin has the opportunity to build a young team and turn them into powerhouses. You know, this is this can really be the dawn of a new era in New Orleans. So you know they're they're gonna <clears throat> draft Zion Williamson in number oh, one. Oh well, yeah, that that's that's definitely gonna happen. So the next thing is the number four pick. And who you take there. One of the questions that is out there is do you select someone with a fourth pick or do you try to trade down and get some more options out of it? Um, I mean that having two of the first five picks in NBA draft, it it looks like a you know quite the deal. Uh, some people are saying that the Lakers won that deal hands down. No, but honestly, no. They, I mean, it's way better. This deal was way better than the, than the garbage that Magic offered us. Uh, in you know during the uh trade deadline, but I mean. What well, if the Pelicans have traded the number four pick for a much more experienced player? You know, they say, hey, we'll give you the first round pick, but we want this person. Like, they can do, like, David Griffin has a, a chance to further put the ball in his court and add more cards to his deck. I mean, because you're already getting Zion Williamson. That's that's already big. You already got multiple second round picks for Nico Miritich. I mean, it it's, it all depends on how young does David Griffin want this team or how much experience do you want. Because right now, the most experienced guy on this team right now is Drew Holiday. Uh, but I feel that <coughs> we need to trade number four pick for another decent veteran, maybe, like me or a couple of uh, rotational players. You see, I was kind of – what I think would just be funny to mess with everybody in the league – is if uh, the Pelicans had the first two picks in drafts, so number one, number two. <laughs> and, you know, and just get up there with the number one overall pick and not pick Zion. <laughs> Take him second. 
just to troll everybody. She didn't troll everybody. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, if there's any player to take before Zion, if there's any player, I mean, Zion's going number one. I don't see anybody getting taken over him because Zion is a once in a lifetime player. He is a freak of nature, and he is pretty much the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, but a, a guy that I'll probably put up there with him would be John Morant, and John Morant pretty much bursted onto the scene during his time at Murray State. But I feel that. I mean, if the Pelicans were to take anybody at number four, if they were to take anybody at number four, I would say R.J. Barrett from Duke. Yeah, he's probably going to be gone, to be honest. By number three? Yeah, I think he'll be gone by number three. But if he's still on the board, the Pelicans should take R.J. Barrett. Why? R.J. and Zion used to be teammates, and they were pretty much yin and yang. They were pretty much Bonnie and Clyde. So pairing Zion with his college teammate, would further help him adjust to being in the league, and it would further they'll be able to complement each other, and they'll be further be able to as far as adapt to being on the professional level. So, if R.J. Barrett is not going by number four, take R.J. Barrett. <clears throat> yeah, I can see that. I actually would thought it would be a good pick, but a lot of people so, are, are expecting. So, I mean, him. so if I mean, if I were David Griffin, I would pay attention to uh, who gets taken number three. If R.J. Barrett has, is not if R.J. Barrett is still on the board by the time he gets to number four, don't trade number four pick. Get R.J. Barrett and pair these guys up. So the way that the, the, the trade works uh, to me is, is fascinating because they don't just straight up get three picks. There's actually a bunch of conditions that go into it. So uh, the only thing that is absolutely certain with this trade is that they get this year's number four. Right. I mean, and then they get the future first round picks from the Lakers. Yeah, but here's how that works. As it is, so they get this year's fourth, and then they have to wait till 2021 to get their next pick. However, that's a protected pick. If the Lakers fall out of the top eight draft wise, so officially bottom I, eight. I don't like how they want to add these conditions because it's just so confusing. Like, I don't know why the NBA wants to be so complicated about these conditions. Like, look, we gave you Anthony Davis. We got your draft picks. So shut the hell up. Well, well no, it doesn't, you know, doesn't stop there. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, where was he? Okay, so if, the, if that pick falls out of the top eight, the Lakers get to keep it. Uh and then that pick will be deferred to the next year, so 2022. And 20... I see. Uh, it's like 2023. You see what's doing to him? You see what's doing to him? <laughs> and y'all want to put conditions on all of it. Like, why? But it, continue. So they have another pick where they can decide if they want to... In 2023, they have the option to decide if they want to swap first round picks with the Lakers. I just want to let you know you lost me uh, about halfway through all of that. <laughs> just letting you know, I'm just on autopilot right now. And then in 2024, they have the option to decide to take the Lakers first round pick or if they don't like the positioning, they could wait till 2025 to take the first round pick. So they got options here. Um... You know it's easier than those conditions. Me going to Nether Realm and resurrecting the Shirai Ryu while <laughs> beheading Quan Chi and throwing him into a Soul Nado with Noob Saibot. Yes, I'm using Mortal Kombat references because I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan and I, I forbid your judgment. Uh, that's actually a lot more easier than the condition that you just said. Just saying. Um, yeah. But... Uh, it's going to be a wild off season. Uh, also, Kevin Durant. I mean, anybody who lands Kevin Durant in the off season, you're going to have to wait probably a year because Kevin Durant's going to be out with injury. So, yeah, his stock prime might have dropped a little. Honestly, I'll be a bit surprised if anyone really tries to sign him this year. Uh, yeah, I would be surprised too. I don't see anybody trying to sign him. With, I mean, with a ruptured Achilles, yeah, uh, that's actually hard to come back from. You look at Derrick Rose; he tore his ACL, and then the next thing he got injured, he <clears throat> tore the same ACL. I mean, he hasn't been the same since. So, I mean, Kevin Durant's stock has dropped, 
So there's not really much sweepstakes for him because they know that he's pretty much going to miss all of next season because of his ruptured Achilles. Uh, and there's no telling uh, how he will be when he comes back from his injury, if he'll still be the same basketball player. So, I mean, there's not much as far as sweepstakes for as far as Kevin Durant. Now, Kyrie Irving, that's a different story. Kawhi Leonard, that's a different story. These are guys that are pretty much in their prime. Um, uh, Clay Thompson, I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll probably be back by next season. I mean, he has a torn ACL, but, I mean, he can bounce back from that. I mean, he is one of the dead-eye shooters in the league. Uh, I really don't see Kevin Durant staying in Golden State. Uh I mean, as far as rehabbing, he might just stay. But, I mean, he won't be playing next season. Uh, I don't see Klay Thompson staying around. And um, I would be surprised if Draymond Green stays in Golden State as well. I will actually be surprised. Hmm. Honestly, I mean, he is an underappreciated player. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody from another team tries to go after Draymond uh, in the offseason. Okay, so I think that just about wraps up this uh, season of Basketball Street Beat. This is going to be a wild off season, everybody. So buckle up. It's going to be a roller coaster. We're going on our trip in our free agency ship. <laughs> Trading through the skies. Let me stop. Ha, ha, ha.